sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind.
Andrew, Andrew, you come and sit. Oh, I'm fine standing. It's okay. Smart thinking. What do you do? Well, first of all, I couldn't say I don't have my glasses, I can't read it. Take it. Yeah. 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 Somebody else coming. Stuff it. Stuff it. Just put it into your glass. Oh, oh I see. And what you don't have. Are we waiting for anybody else or do we? Okay. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's good to be with you all. Can you all hear me okay? Okay. Well, it's so wonderful and I'm honored to be here as we remember our dear Sharon and celebrate her life together. Hopefully you all received a bulletin. We'll do our best. It is a windy day, but we begin with a blessing. Blessing be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might have a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter for all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our dear sister Sharon. 
We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home and the company of all your saints, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Okay, I'm reading the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Today we will be reading Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Thank you. Amen. now the time appointed for remembrances for those that are sharing. Okay, can I, that's a little better. <laughs> um, so welcome everyone. Uh, thank you all for, for coming. Um, I think I got up first because I didn't know what Andrew was going to say and it's probably safer that I go first, but uh, <laughs> this all happened pretty quickly and pretty suddenly and and uh, I don't know if this is normal or not but I've been having these um, memories or remembrances uh, ever since she she passed away and some of them are weeks old and some of them are decades old and um, as I tried to make sense of them all I, the, the common thread that seemed to be interwoven into each of them was around how caring and loving and uh, welcoming and um, just what a nice person my mom was. And um, like I said, some of these are decades old. I think back to when we were kids and, and we had uh, uh, really the neighborhood kids all gathered at our house. And yeah, there was the, the woods and the creek and my super cool treehouse fort and, and of course my scintillating personality, but none of that was why people came. They came because my mom had fresh brownies, cookies, uh, sweets and treats and lemonade and all sorts of stuff and and they always felt cared for and welcomed when they came and um, that continued through junior high and, and high school and college my friends loved it when my parents would come down to Wake Forest and, and see us because they'd take all of us out for for great meals that we weren't used to having compared to cafeteria food so um, just just wonderful really uh, and, and so welcoming and, and so gracious. And um, this, this uh, story couldn't be complete without talking about the Thanksgiving uh, extravaganzas. And I'm not talking about five people around a turkey. I'm talking 40. 30, 40, 50. I don't know if we touch 60 or not, but um, 
and, and it was a formal sit down meal. And after the meal, it was stories and uh, jokes and, and fun memories and, and more desserts than the Cheesecake Factory. And, and um, uh, you know, it was just, the, they never seemed stressed by it either. Uh, I don't know, Rob, we took over maybe eight years ago, nine years ago. My dad in his late 80s said, okay, enough's enough. We've hosted this, this <laughs> gathering too long. And so Marion and I and Robin Gretchen took over. And I won't speak for Robin Gretchen, but we were completely stressed out leading up to these things. And they, they handled it so smoothly. I don't know if it's because they had some of my dad's world famous whiskey sours before getting ready for the party or, or if it was truly just out of the, the love and care that she had for all of us and getting everyone together. And, and of course this continued with neighborhood gatherings, with friends, New Year's adventures, uh, all sorts of wonderful things. So uh, really uh, those types of things really helped def define my mom. And um, I know it's cold and windy, so I'll just talk one other topic real quick. And, and this is around uh, probably the argument that my siblings and I had most often and that was who was my mom's favorite. And uh, I'm sure Andrew's gonna tell you he is, uh, but I think that was part of my mom's secret sauce too, is she made everybody that she spoke to feel like they were her favorite. And um, that's quite a gift to have and quite a gift for her to give. Um, and, uh, and I know everybody that interacted with her felt that way. Um, and despite what Andrew may tell you, I'm going to set the record straight and tell you it was my dad that was her favorite. And uh, after 55 years of marriage, uh, almost 55 years of marriage, um, you know, the, the last time they were together at my house was just before this happened. They, I drove them around to look at the Christmas lights and he still held the car door open, helped her, helped her with a coat and held her hand like they were on their first date and um, uh, it's the kind of enduring love and friendship we all hope to have and and it definitely definitely rose him to the to the top of the list when it comes to favorites now I will say he had some competition arrive about 19 years ago <laughs> uh, when when she started getting grandkids and um, I know there's a lot of great grandmothers out there, so no offense to anybody, but there was no one on earth that was more ready to be a grandmother than my mom. And she had a ton of practice. I think you know before my sister and brother and I were born, they helped raise about 12 foster babies until they were adopted. And then numerous nieces, nephews, cousins, neighbors, friends, anybody that had a baby. <laughs> uh, my mom would grab a hold of that baby and not let go. And uh, uh, so certainly the arrival of her, her grandchildren was uh, that little slice of heaven that she got to see early. And, and uh, she was taken too early from them, but, uh, but certainly gave them enough love to last many lifetimes. So I'll, uh, I'll leave it with that. I think Andrew's going to get up here and say something. Um, I want to thank you all for coming and for and for watching and um, and certainly enduring this cold to be here with us and uh, this is lovely and all but I know it's not necessarily what my mom would have wanted she she would have wanted a big crowd and not to make a fuss over her but to get everybody together and get people uh, sharing memories and, and making memories and and um, you know I think as this pandemic uh, starts to subside and the vaccines take over get together with your neighbor that you haven't seen for a while or gather with friends and family that's that's definitely you know use the lessons my mom taught us all in in her generous hosting and hospitality and um, and uh, I'll turn things over to Andrew I feel like I almost need to give one of those infomercial warnings like he does not uh, his views do not represent the views of the Beardall family, uh, but hopefully he'll be on good behavior today. <clears throat> Thanks, Matt. So let me apologize for my voice. I had a cold two weeks ago and I still got laryngitis. But I want to thank everybody for coming. I want to thank everybody who's watching. 
Reagan, you actually said it best a couple of minutes ago when you said a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. And this, oddly enough, is both. So, uh, unlike Matt, I wrote down a couple of things. <clears throat> um, you know, what to say about my mom? I mean, I could say that she was loving and caring and kind and generous, but all of you already know that. In fact, anybody that met my mom knew that within about five minutes of meeting her. So what can I tell you? I'm gonna talk about some aspects of my mom that were a little bit more subtle, that maybe everybody didn't know, but they're still some of the important building blocks of her life. My mom went to the University of Maryland and she got her degree in biology. Shortly after that, she went up to the Scripps Institute at Woods Hole for oceanographic research. My mom was a uh, woman in STEM before anyone knew what that meant. Trailblazer that she was. But she wasn't all studious and hardworking in college. See, my mom was a sorority girl and quite a prankster. Many of the women of Cap Alpha Theta wondered how a shark from the marine biology lab ended up in the sorority house bathtub. Uh, to those of you who are watching and maybe didn't realize it, that was my mom. <clears throat> it also didn't stop there. There was one homecoming. When in the middle of the night, the fire alarm got pulled at the sorority house. And all of the various uh, sorority sisters were going down the fire escape in their PJs and nightgowns and bathrobes. And then somehow the fraternity that they were doing homecoming with was all lined up in their cars, flipped on the lights as they were all on the fire escape. In case you're wondering who pulled that fire alarm, that was also my mom. Now, those enjoyment of pranks went down the years. And <clears throat> since Matthew saw fit to pick on me, I will now pick on him. Because when he was in college, during his freshman year, his beloved older brother had about 50 people call him about the goat that he had for sale. Now it wasn't just people calling him. It was residence life at Wake Forest. It was the Wake Forest student newspaper and one of his professors. Needless to say, my brother was furious at being the freshman goat boy on campus. He didn't like it at all. And he immediately called my mom <coughs> to excoriate his big brother. Now, mom immediately called me because she supported her son there. And she told me to stop picking on my brother. At least I think that's what she said. Because you see, she was so busy laughing as I told her all of the steps of this very complicated practical joke. I don't even know what she actually said. <clears throat> now, my mom, she always had our backs. Whether it was last minute school help, cooking us our favorites when we were sick, or just not hurting my brother's and sister's feelings by telling them that I was the favorite. Um, <clears throat> she was always there for us and she supported each one of us. Now, for me, whether it was Boy Scouts or Lego or model building or mysteries or books or sci-fi or Lego or rocketry or cooking, making stained glass, Lego, magic, <clears throat> you know, selling seafood, puzzles, trains, stamp collecting, books, and more Lego. She supported me on all of that. And that was just me. I mean, you can only imagine the weird stuff that my brother and sister got into. But they were all supported as well. And it wasn't just us. Like Matt said, it was our friends. Whether it was being a home for wayward Thanksgiving orphans, or rushing a friend to the ER, or letting them spend the night during an unexpected snowstorm. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> mom would do anything to help out her kids. And there was one instance that stood out for me that showed not just her caring, but that she had some steel in her too. Now it's no secret that I've had asthma problems all my life, all sorts of breathing issues, especially when I was younger. You guys have all seen me carrying this asthma sprayer around and using it. Well, way back in 1983, I had finished elementary school and I was going to junior high. And what they had to do was they had to keep prescription medicine 
in the nurse's office. But there was a very real concern because my junior eye was gigantic, especially since I was about as tall as Carson. And there was concern that if I was having breathing problems, I might not make it to the nurse's office. So my mom went to the nurse and then to the principal and then to the county administration office. Now I don't know what she said, but somehow I was the first youngster in the county who was allowed to carry prescription medicine in his pocket in junior high. That was my mom standing up. <clears throat> in fact, my mom supported us no, no matter what. The last story showed that she was had some steel in her, like I said. This next one was about my mom supporting me. It was one of the handful of times I can ever remember my mom being mean to somebody. And this was in the middle of my divorce. And <clears throat> um, some of my ex's belongings were over at mom and dad's. And my ex went over there to pick up her stuff. And my mom, and prepare yourself for this because it is gonna shock all of you. My mom, in a fit of meanness, did not offer her a beverage. <laughs> now, I know that's profoundly shocking, but that was my mom having my back and supporting me. Now look, there are a lot of wonderful things I could say and I could, I could go on for hours. Um, I probably would, except it's cold and I can't talk so well. But she was a wonderful parent and a wonderful person. She and my father are responsible for, you know, who we are today. She touched everyone here and everybody watching with her caring and her compassion and her thoughtfulness. I love her, I'll miss her, and in one of the few things that I get to hold over my brother and sister, I got to spend a few years more with her than they did, coming up on 50 years, and I am truly lucky for that. So thank you all. Gretchen will now share with us Amazing Grace. Don't worry, you couldn't hear me. <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. Just did that grace appear the hour I first believed through many dangers, toils, and snares I have already.
must be gone. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. lost but now I am found was blind but now I see while reading John 14, 1 through 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We're comfortable taking masks off for speaking. Okay. Well, thank you for those remembrances that have been shared, reading by the grandkids. It's so wonderful to, I don't know, there's something, because Sharon has talked so much about you all, even in the short time I've been at Emanuel, it's just so good to hear those stories. So thank you. Well, good afternoon again, everyone, and may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. It is a blessing to be with you as we lay our dear Sharon to her rest, a loving wife, a loving mother, a grandmother, and of course a friend. Sharon was such a source of warmth and light. Such heartache as one feels at the passing of a loved one is something of course to be honored. Honored for an earthly life that has now reached the end of its course and honored for the person with whom love has been shared. We know not the time nor the hour, but we know that no matter one's level of faith in God, the sting of loss hurts because of love. As the great Christian spiritualist Thomas Kempis wrote, love is devoted and thankful to God, always trusting and hoping in him even when it doesn't taste his sweetness. For without pain, no one can live and love. And so, of course, love is what brings a family together on such a day to mourn the passing of a loved one. It is love that springs forth the tears on faces and the memories of this dearly departed fixture of our life. Sharon's love for each of you was complete. And I was lucky myself to have witnessed it. You mentioned how ready she was always to hold a grandchild. Well, my son was three months old when I came here down to Maryland. And it wasn't too long after a service before she was holding him too. And as, excuse me, as a young pastor coming here in a sea of much older pastors, as you can imagine, I was often nervous about preaching for the first time because well, some people thought maybe I didn't have the same degree of life experiences to draw from. And so I would often look out there and I would see Sharon there out in the crowd, always towards the back of the church. You know, good Lutheran, she's always sitting in the last pew. <laughs> but as I would share these stories, drawing upon what I could, which was my children talking about you know, the simple funny things that they did, their way of interacting with one another or with life or 
the sometimes completely profound things that children have this tendency to do, she would sit there with the biggest smile on her face. And it would soon be afterwards that she would come forward. This wind's not working for me. But she would come forward, always the first through the line. Of course, there were advantages to sitting in the back of the church. But she would immediately share such a kind word about the sermon that I offered. And then she would begin to gush about her grandchildren and about her time as a mother and a grandmother because those were the things that she most related to. She took such joy in watching children grow. And so I can say with confidence, Sharon loved you all fiercely. She had a love that shined through powerfully, despite at least the way she often presented herself as being gentle. Sharon's love was a testament of who she was and what she believed most in. Love mattered above all else. Our gospel lesson that we hear today ensures us that in God's home, there is a place for all those who live with the love of God in their heart. And Sharon took Jesus' love to heart, didn't she? Love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And she lived that way her entire life. She clung to love tightly and honored it so well in the way that she lived and interacted with those around her. It's also so fitting that we heard today the prayer of St. Francis. Francis's life, of course, was one that was marked by transformation from somebody that was a wealthy, selfish man to somebody that became absolutely selfless in what he did. One of the precepts that Franciscans even today live by is this idea that in life, we should hold to things, material things, worldly things, lightly. But it's to the things that are God-given and God's blessing that we should most hold tightly to. Love, peace, joy, and of course, faith. And Sharon clung to these things tightly in the way that she just loved everyone, gushed over everyone that she met. And as we saw that, God saw that too. And now Sharon rests in God's house. And so what can we do? Honor and love Sharon by honoring and loving one another. Hold tightly to the love that she honored in life. Hold tightly to the love of Christ. Hold tightly to the promise of God's love. Don't hold tightly to the things that set themselves between us and that. Hold lightly but reverently to the sadness that we feel. And hold lightly to doubt whenever it enters into our hearts. But as Sharon did, and as I say to you, beloved in Christ, cling tightly to love. And so we will miss our dear Sharon, but her memory and her love continues to live through all of us and through all of you especially. And so to that I say to the glory of God and to the glory of Sharon's love may we give. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray, or let us offer and say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
My friends, let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn and assure in certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will ever be able to separate us from our love in you, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Again we pray. Holy God, holy and powerful, by the death and burial of Jesus, your anointed, you have destroyed the power of death and made holy the resting places of all your people. Keep our sister Sharon, whose body we now lay to rest in the company of all your saints. And at last, O God, raise her up to share with all the faithful the endless joy and peace, won through the glorious resurrection of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Ensure in certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister Sharon as we commit her body to its final resting place. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord's face shine on her with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon her with favor and give her peace. Amen. Gathered together as one body, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, the God of peace, who brought again from the dead Lord, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do God's will, working in you which is well-pleasing to God, through Jesus Christ, to whom the glory be forever and ever. Amen. And now, my dear friends, go forth in peace and light. Live in love as our dear Sharon did. Honor her memory through your love of one another. Go in peace. Ladies and gentlemen, this will conclude our services here at the cemetery. The interment will be cared for once everyone returns to their cars. On behalf of the family, I'd like to thank you all for being with them today and all of your support. At your leisure, you may return to your cars. Welcome, we're having a...
small outdoor reception, heated tents. If you want to come, say hi. We're happy to have you. Stop at my house. We're going to have a fireplace. I'll be right with you. <laughs> I'm trying to get around so you can see him. Yeah, is that so funny? What's so funny? Does that look funny? <laughs> so funny. That's so
Yeah. Yeah. He sees the house and he goes knock, knock, knock. And he peeks in this window. And he peeks in that window. And he pulls the latch. And he pulls this latch. And he rings the bell. That's right. He goes yeah. in and says, oh, do, 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 do. Yes, as he does. <laughs> so now she's biting my finger. <laughs> do, 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 do. How do you do, 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 do?
One. She's only two. Eight. Two. Three. three. Carson cheated. <laughs> Get those two, Carson. There we go. Yeah.